Sebastian lines up in third position from Costa Rica. And in fourth place, hear the cheer in the background for Team Italy and Stefano Conti. Norway with Tommy Oskart lines up in fifth position. And alongside Tommy, it is Team Hungary with Benjamin Bader behind the wheel. Poland a line up in seventh position. A lot of support for them here with Martin Frederick behind the wheel. Chinese Taipei behind the wheel of the uh, number eight machine there. Ninth position is James Baldwin for the United Kingdom. How will James get on? Just made it through in the repertage, as did the Netherlands driver of Leon Ackerman. Sweden line up in P11. That's Robin Noble behind the wheel and Team Malaysia with Mior Hafish down in P12. So you can see on the left-hand side of your screen a first look at the tyre compounds for these drivers. Interestingly, the top three teams are on the soft compound of tyre. Uh, then you can see hard compounds there for Italy and Norway, medium for Hungary there in the middle, soft for Poland, hard for Chinese uh, Taipei, then uh, UK, also Sweden and Malaysia, and the soft compound there in the middle of that gaggle for the Netherlands as well. So uh, interesting to see how strategies will play out, what you should expect with the hard compounds. Get those off as soon as possible. You don't want to be on those tyres for any longer than you need to be uh, because they are the slowest compound of tyre and you only have to run them for one lap. And if you do the rest of the race on a medium or soft, why would you not do that? But I could be wrong. Let's wait and see how it all plays out. Germany, Australia and Costa Rica are on the soft compound, so they're going to try and break away from the rest of the field early doors. But what will happen then? Let's wait and find out, shall we? The 2019 FIA Motorsport Games Grand Final here in Rome in Italy is underway then. And Germany leads the field over the timing line. Australia slotting themselves into second. Costa Rica in there as well. As they come on the long run down to the first corner, Germany versus Australia. As they come side by side down to T1. Pick your breaking point, boys, and don't go too late. Australia trying to go around the outside. Germany on the inside there. Bit of drivers going on, but further back as Norway running a bit wide. But Germany and Australia are still side by side through turn three. And Germany eventually gets the upshot as they come down into T4. But no quarter given as Lakowski tries to hold it around the outside in tier four. That is brilliant there from Cody Lakowski. And still, they're side by side, but down into T5, squeezing there from Mick Hazel. But the inside line for Cody Lakowski means he does inherit the lead. And now Cody Nikola Lakowski for Australia leads the way. Germany in second, Costa Rica in third, and Team Poland in fourth place. So the soft compound tyres, as you would expect, significantly faster in these opening stages of the race. Italy still there in P5, but they're a bit of a sitting duck, and certainly after running wide like that, a bit of contact, I think, as well, helped there by the Netherlands. And now all the soft compound tyre drivers are in the top positions in this race. You saw Hungary there having a look at Italy as well. Hungary on the medium tyres and Italy on the hard. So, of course, they're significantly faster at this stage here as well. Meanwhile, it's been an absolute shocker of a start to the race for Norway. They started in P5, they're down in P12 after this opening lap here. Oh, and a spin for Hungary out of the chicane. Benjamin Barda sends it round and drops down. Italy, meanwhile, come into the pit lane off the hard contents of tyres, onto the softs. Everybody else on the hards trying to follow suit. Some go for medium, some go for softs. Here come Germany, though, and Australia side by side for the race lead. Germany on the outside, Australia on the inside, and Mikhail is out for Germany, goes through into the race lead. Brilliant stuff there for Germany. So now it is his owl advantage. Australia in second, Costa Rica in third, two seconds adrift in P3. Netherlands are in P4 there, 1.3 seconds back. So this is going to be very interesting indeed to see how it all plays out for these guys. Of course, they have the honour, if they finish on the top step, of becoming the inaugural 2019 FIA Motorsports Games GT Digital Cup winner. And if you think that's a mouthful, you wait till they have to announce that on the podium as well. But Australia now in second position. And does Cody Nikola Lukowski have any answer to Mikhail Hazal at this stage? Hazal, of course, if you watch the Gran Turismo uh, World Tour events that we partake in, and he has partaken in, he's won one so far this year in Salzburg and has been very competitive 
in a lot of others as well, finishing second on two other occasions. So he is definitely one to watch. Cody Nikola Lukowski, meanwhile, just 19 years old, has won in the Manufacturer Series as opposed to the Nations Cup in the GT World Tour in New York and Salzburg. And a moment there for Nikolikovsky coming through into the final corner. That could really put pay to his race and laws him into the clutches of Bernie Valverde, who takes profit and inherits second position. So Valverde, at the blink of an eye, is now through into P2, but Lukowski is going to try and fight back. Valverde goes to Benzin. Lukowski on the outside. Side by side they come through turn one. But it is Valverde with the advantage and Valverde with the position into second place there for the Costa Rican driver. So, very interesting stuff here. Now, you've got Australia with just over a second, just under a second's advantage to the Netherlands and to Leon Ackerman, who is in P4 at the moment. There is the Dutch driver on the soft top out of tyres. That's really impressive, actually, from Leon Ackerman. He started this race down in 10th position. He's now up into P4 after a blinding opening few laps here. Of course, there's strategy to take into account here in this race as well. Who will piss and when? Will we see the overcuts or undercuts being made? Will Lukowski opt to go into the pit lane after running behind Valverde and try and get himself out of the traffic, out of contention uh, for this battle for the time being and try and get some clean air and then inherently uh, try and overcut the likes of uh, Valverde and potentially even Mikhail Hazal, although Hazal's got a good enough advantage, just under three and a half seconds as things stand at the moment. But it's getting very tense indeed between these drivers to see how it all plays out. And uh, Leon Ackerman very much looking comfortable behind the wheel of the car. You can see, oh no, but I say that and the commentator's curse is alive and well as Ackerman spins it over on the curb. What have I said? Leon Ackerman spins it round, loses fourth place in the Heron of the as well. So up into P3, goes Stefano Conti for Italy. And that is him now into fourth position. You can see there just in the background, Poland with a penalty as well for one reason or another. There is Ackerman over the sausage curb, upsets the balance of the car, spins it, pirouettes it round, and has to recover it and get himself back in contention of the race. And now he's lost out to Team Poland. And also James Baldwin for the UK coming into play here as well. So. That is Christmas come early, actually, for this man here, Cody Nikola Lukowski in P3, because he now has just a bit of breathing room uh, behind him now, just to try and settle into a rhythm here in this race, because uh, he was very much on the back foot with Ackerman bearing down on him following that mistake that he made. And, uh, well, it could prove to be very inspired here for Cody Nikola Lukowski. Meanwhile, Mikhail Hazal is in a different postcode for Team Germany at the moment. 3.8 seconds he sits over the rest of the field at the moment. Meanwhile, there is the UK putting the pressure onto the Netherlands then. Poland with that half-second penalty for exceeding track limits just in the front of his shot, just coming through to the penalty zone we are now. Serves the penalty, moves off the racing line. The Netherlands, though, and Ackerman trying to attack. Here comes Baldwin down the inside at turn 10 of Lukaisha. He goes through into sixth position. Great move there for James Baldwin. Timed that to perfection. Sold Ackerman a dummy going into that corner. Sent it up the inside. And now he's through into P6. So his next target will be the Polish team. Behind the wheel of the Polish car at the moment is Martin Sviderik on the softer compound of tyres. Of course, Netherlands haven't made a pit stop here in this race, so this is uh, even more impressive, whereas the UK uh, has, Poland in, in front of them have not. So a little bit out of position here, you would say, for the UK at the moment, but inherently uh, a very good battle that is going on. Meanwhile, as uh, Chinese Taipei changed positions, and the UK changed positions as well. Down the inside and through into P5 there for James Baldwin. Nice driving for the Briton. He's through into fifth place. He'll be happy with that one there. And now he's got a six point, uh, sorry, 5.6 second of a gap to make up to Italy. A bit of a tall order, but the most thing he can do now is just run in clean air on this soft tyre, make that stint as long as he possibly can, for as uh, viably possible as he possibly can as well. There's no point running on soft one of the tyres, of course, if the tyres are completely clapped out. You want to be running on those whilst they're in good working order. And whilst he's not in dirty air and he's not trying to find his way back through on other cars, then in theory, James Baldwin is in the pound seats here as are Italy there as well. They're, of course, uh, having made a pit stop and are also on the softer compound of tyres. So, lap final of 19 we're on here in the final for the 2019 FIA Motorsport Games. But it's beginning to settle down here. And that's what you see generally in these longer races, in the uh, mid-stints. 
when drivers have made their first pit stop, it will begin to settle down a little bit. And then in the end of the race, when everyone's on different tyre compounds and running different strategies, that generally is when it begins to come alive. So uh, just keep an eye out for that one and hold your horses for now because it could get very exciting in the closing stages of this race. Uh, Hungary in eighth place, Sweden in ninth, uh, in 11th rather, I should say, and Norway in 12th are on the medium compound of tyres as the Netherlands do finally come in from their soft compound of tyres after six laps onto the mediums then for their middle stint in the race. So they're, of course, going to be on the hard compound of tyres now at the end of that race. And uh, that could be very interesting, actually, here because that's the slowest compound of tyres. So depending on where they are on track and what everybody else is doing in terms of their strategy, that could prove to be a very interesting call indeed and by interesting I mean a poor call for Leon Ackerman but let's wait and see and find out how things will happen here's the Chinese Taipei driver you can just see there in P8 and driving behind the wheel of the Chinese Taipei car is Ying Teng Chu or Cho rather I should say started racing at the age of five and uh, has competed in various world tour events for Gran Turismo and uh, is currently 12th actually in the Asian region standings as well so a uh, driver who's held in very high esteem and did a great job to make it through here to the racing after his semi-final and now is attacking Hungary and Benjamin Barda it's been a bad race to forget for Benjamin Barda and it's about to get worse as Chinese Taipei trying to go the long way around the outside slight lock up on the brakes there into turn 10 and Chinese Taipei and Yi Teng Chu go through then into P7 so good driving there for Chinese Taipei don't forget though they are of course on the soft compound of tyres, so they will, as you would expect, be faster than Hungary at the moment as Australia and Costa Rica come in from the uh, pit lane then. And interestingly, Australia and Cody Nikola Lukowski have gone for the uh, soft to the soft compound of tyres here, whereas Costa Rica have gone soft to mediums. And I'm not quite sure what's happening there with Cody Nikola Lukowski. That could be a very poor strategy call or a mistake because, of course, he's got to run all three tyre compounds in this race. And here come Italy going the long way around the outside and chopping the nose off of Costa Rica through turn three. That was aggressive there from Stefano Conti. And Valverde tries to challenge, tries to find his way back through, but can't quite manage to do so as they come down into turn number five. And now Australia all over the back like a bad rash of Costa Rica then. Up into turn seven we go, Australia up the inside, here comes Lakowski. does he make it through? Yes he does, he's now into third place on the soft compound of tyres, but the thing is, I'm sure Lakowski he's going to have to pit again, he's going to have to make two more pit stops here in this race. I don't quite know what he's doing here, maybe he's trying to run a longer stint on the soft compound of tyres and then do one lap on the mediums, one lap on the hards at the end of that one. The problem with that is, of course, you've got to make two pit stops, you're losing double the amount of time, so unless you've got... 10, 15 seconds in hand. I just don't see how that's going to be a strategy that's going to pay off for him. All the meanwhile, though, the race leader has a pitted. This is the race leader of uh, Mikhail Hazal. Oh, and he's had a spin. Oh, dear. Mikhail Hazal has had a spin then over the kerb. And that is not the way they would have wanted to have done that lap at all. And he has lost a good amount of time here. And he comes out of the pit lane now. So where has he emerged? Now, he's gone for the soft compound of tyres. So... Hizal and Lakowski go for the same strategy here in this race. They're going to go for another stint on the soft, then go for the medium and hard tyres for as short a duration as they possibly can. Is that going to be a strategy that's going to pay off? I see what they're trying to do here, is they're trying to build up as much of a gap as they possibly can here in these early, uh, early to mid stages now of this race. And then try and have enough of an advantage to make those two pit stops at the end and give themselves a good bit of daylight. Well. I mean, if you look at the World Tour events, Mikhail Azal's strategy is never one to call into question. So maybe he and Cody Nikola Lukowski in P1 and P2 know something that we don't in this race. Maybe that's the situation. We'll find out in about uh, 11 laps time here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. Meanwhile, in the background there, you can see Italy coming under a bit of pressure here from uh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica on the medium compound of tyres in this race. Whereas Italy on the softer compound, so you would inherently expect the Italian team to be a bit faster. But it seems like Costa Rica and Bernie Valverde, the driver who is behind the wheel of that car at the moment, just able to keep a good amount of pace. Uh, let's keep an eye on things and see how they all play out. This is that mid-race lull I was talking about because it does happen uh, here in these ones when you've got strategy second to place. Everybody just settling into their own rhythms, and it's in the closing stages where it gets very interesting indeed. I suppose, of course, with Germany and Australia, it does get very interesting as well between those two uh, drivers because, of course, they could go different ways in the mid-range stage of this race. Maybe Mick will go for 
uh, the hard common of tyres and maybe we'll see the Kofsky go for the mediums and they'll be on different strategies at the end of this race. Who knows? Let's wait and find out as Hungary make their first pit stop from the medium compound of tyres, so a very long first stint onto the hard compound, and they'll want to try and do as minimal amount of time in this race as possible, get themselves onto the soft compound of tyres, and try and run to the end of the race if they possibly can. Of course, bear in mind, it's seven times tyre wear in this race, so uh, that's one thing to consider in the fact that they will have to uh, bear in mind their tyres will wear out a lot quicker than they would generally into turn seven and turn eight we go there is Bernie Valverde in fourth place just beginning to put the pressure then on to Italy seems that Stefano Conti for the Italian team just 22 years old he is doesn't seem to quite have the pace at the moment as things that stand to just try and uh, close up and uh, just keep that gap in a constant to Costa Rica and subsequently it is allowing it's uh, the Costa Rican team to close up in P4 at the moment so be interesting to see how it all plays out with that. Bernie Valverde, as we said, who is behind the wheel of that team, the Costa Rican driver, 27 years old. Uh, sorry, not 27 years old, rather, I should say. Uh, won the Manufacturer Series in New York in the GT World Tour. Also races in touring cars as well. Now, Italy come into the pit lane here as well from the soft to the medium compound of tyres. So they make their mid race change. The UK also in, and James Baldwin into the pit lane then to make another stop here in this race. Italy out after their second stop. Chinese Sapai. Type, uh, type A rather I should say out of the uh, race uh, out of the pit into the race once again Hungary coming out as well so these are the second and final pit stops and Italy picking up a penalty there for one reason or another so whether that's exceeding track limits or something along the lines of that maybe we'll get a replay of it but Australia now then sitting in second position trying to run the same strategy as Mikhail Hazal and will we see the German and the Australian driver working together here in this grand final Fewer now than nine laps remaining, so we'll be finding out relatively shortly. Italy and Poland, you can see with that tower graphic on the left-hand side of your screen, those flashing red dots indicate that they have been given a penalty. Uh, normally from exceeding track limits, there is Italy with a one-and-a-half-second penalty there as well, so it goes from bad to worse for Italy. Thankfully for them, they've got a bit of a buffer to the UK, who are 5.7 a second back. However, it is going to cause them to lose time against Costa Rica, so... It's all to work to do now here in these closing stages for Stefano Conti. Oh, here's what happened between themselves and Australia. Down in towards turn one we go. They're sweeping, they're swiping, they're ducking, they're diving. Down into the first corner. Was there any contact between them? I think it was just unsafe defending there from uh, Italy and Stefano Conti just moving too much on the start finish straight. More than one movement and that is what he received that penalty there for. Here's the Chinese Type 18. Yi Teng Chu behind the wheel of that car at the moment on the medium tyres, closing up onto the back of Poland. Hardly mentioned Poland actually over the course of uh, this race. And Poland, being driven by Martin Schwederich, only started playing Gran Turismo Sport actually back in April 2018. But has ascended through the local ranks very quickly indeed and is doing a very good job out there in uh, seventh position so far. But is still coming a threat from the Chinese Taipei driver through the long right-hander of Turn 3. Of course, these cars, very high downforce, the Red Bull X 2019s. I'll talk to you more about them in a few moments' time. But, of course, there is a lot of dirty air to consider in the fact that the car gets caught behind them and the front will begin to wash out wide. They'll begin to oversteer like a, uh, a dog on a polished floor. And it will just cause them to spin up the tyres and lose front grip on their tyres as well. So these are all things you've got to consider when you're driving these cars and driving in a bit of traffic as well. But in terms of the Rebel X 2019s, well, the original one actually came out back in Gran Turismo 5. It's a fictional car within Gran Turismo. And uh, it was designed by Adrian Newey. And basically, they said to him, well, if you could have a blank canvas to design a single-seater Formula car, what would it be? And this is the car that he came up with. Well, it was the X 2010 was what he came up with originally. The X 2019 is a more developed version of that. Australia, meanwhile, coming to the pits and again going soft to soft. So they are really trying to stretch out the softs here in this race. That's bold. That is very bold indeed here for uh, Cody Nikola Lukowski. So he's literally, I think, going to try and do one lap on the mediums, one lap on the hards, and try and make a four-stop race over the course of 19 laps. I don't know if that's going to work. You know, I, I imagine two sits, maybe you could try and pull something out. Maybe you could try and make it work. But two stops, two more tyre compounds to go on for Cody Nikola Lukowski, unless Mikhail Hazal follows suit here. I just don't know if that is going to work. But we'll wait to see, we'll wait to find out. Meanwhile, Norway coming into the pit lane there from P12. They're also going soft to soft once again. So 
Those soft compound tyres with the seven times tyre wear quite clearly wearing out very quickly here at this Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. That is not ideal at all because they will have to make more pit stops than they were bargaining for. And that is what we've seen with Australia at the moment. Will we see Mikhail Hazal following suit? Meanwhile, now the Netherlands ahead of Poland. There is Poland in P7. Quiet race for them so far. They are in the medium compound of tyres and being closed up on by Sweden, who are on the soft compound of tyres. You can see Sweden there in P8, just running through the right hand, a little bit wide there, actually, through Kamsa, but uh, having a relatively good line. So let's keep an eye out and see how Sweden are able to close that gap. Behind the wheel of the Swedish car, it is Robin Noborg, 27 years old, former kart racer, turned sim racer. Also got a bit of experience of driving at the Nordschleife as well. And doing a good job there of just beginning to close that gap down on the Polish team. So then, Poland come into the pit lane. Sweden carry on for another lap. So off of the medium compound of tyres there for Poland. Back onto the soft. So everybody's just going to try and do one lap on the hard tyre. They know it's an unfavoured tyre. They know it's not ideal to be competing on. And Poland emerged out of the pit lane just ahead of Team Malaysia then, who have, again, had a very quiet race here so far. Down in P12 is where Malaysia started, sitting in ninth place at the moment. It's not been ideal there for him. What about James Baldwin here? He won the world's fastest gamer competition and will actually be racing in GT4 and GT3 in 2020. He was a former uh, racer, actually, was James Baldwin. Great to see him doing so well running in this race, won the 2019 uh, E-Race of Champions competition earlier on this year as well. So running there in P5 on the medium tyres on this middle stint, so he's opting on the fact that he's not having to make an extra two pit stops in this race, is uh, James at the moment. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to close up that deficit. You can see he is closing up onto the back of Team Italy. Two seconds the gap between Italy and the UK for P4 and P5 at the moment as they come through the right-hander. Uh, down in towards the final sequence in this lap, of course, which was added to the Grand Prix calendar back in 2007. And we'll devise opinion on whether it's popular or not, but either way, we have to compete with it. There is Australia, though, and there is Cody Nikola Lukowski again all over the back of uh, Mikhail Hazal. So that extra pit stop has not halted Team Australia and Cody Lukowski here. And this could be very interesting indeed because, of course, uh, Hazal's tyres are going to be very much past their best here. But Lukowski has closed that gap down, having made an extra pit stop. So it could be advantage Cody Nikola Lukowski as things stand. Malaysia, meanwhile, out of the pit lane onto the soft compound of tyres here. We're going to see a flurry of last minute pit stops in this race onto the hard compound of tyres. But uh, it's all to play for in terms of the lead of the race. And the problem is that Mikhail Hazal, he's in a catch-22 situation here. He can't pit now because he's going to drop behind Cody Lukowski. Of course, he'll have fresher tyres, but he will uh, have dropped back. And that gap, and I'm sure it will be too big. And that's the problem. Let's keep an eye out and see how things go meanwhile. On board here with Nikola Lukowski, you can see in there visibly much more grip he has got underneath him at the moment. Those soft compound of tyres, clearly a lot fresher, clearly providing more grip and clearly working very well indeed. And Mikhail Hazal just looks like a bit of a sitting duck as uh, things stand. Through the final corner we go and surely it's only a matter of time with Lukowski having the advantage of the slipstream. More grip underneath him before he thinks about a move. Will he think about a launch down to the T1? He's got great slipstream. Hazal goes defensive. Side by side we come. Australia versus Germany. And Australia leads in the grand final for the 20. Oh, and Mikhail Hazal goes off at turn two. Hazal makes a mistake and that could be the Germans race run here in Catalonia in the grand final for the motorsport games. Let's see it again. Down into T1 we go. Here's his out, too eager on the power, slips it off onto the gravel trap. Well, he was lucky that it wasn't far worse than that, but that is a big shame there for uh, Mikhail Hazal, who has now got a 7.3 second gap. So I reckon second could be the best that he will hope for. And that is Christmas come early, meanwhile, for Australia. And Cody Nikola Lukowski. Hungary, meanwhile, Norway have made three put stops in this race. Chinese Taipei, uh, meanwhile with uh, Geek Teng Chu behind the wheel of the car. 
in ninth position there. They made two. Here come the Netherlands now ahead of Poland down into T5. That looked very aggressive in T there from the uh, Netherlands. And Leon Ackerman, here come Poland though on the soft corner tyres, trying to fight back down into the turn seven. We go and up the inside and through into sixth position there for Team Poland. So nicely done for the Polish team. Great driving behind the wheel for Martin Schroederich. Limited experience he has on GT Sport, but through into sixth position. Let's have a look at the replay. Here is Australia. I think they've had a spin. They have, and that's Lakovsky. So everybody's making mistakes out in front. Didn't allow Hazal to close up. It did, but not to find his way through. Germany and Hazal comes into the pit lane then for their stop, and they go onto the medium cop out of tyres here for the closing stages of this race. So not opting to emulate the same strategy as Cody Lukowski. Of course, Lukowski here, he has got to make another pit stop in this race. And is that going to allow Costa Rica and Germany potentially to come back into the foray? I think we could see Costa Rica and Bernie Valverde ready to spring a few surprises in the remaining three laps in this race. Netherlands come out of the pit lane then on their final stages there on the hard cop out of tyres. Here we are though, side by side for Malaysia and Chinese Taipei on the outside. Malaysia on the inside, through they go. Malaysia into ninth place, but they run it wide. Mior Hafiz runs it wide, but he holds on to P9. So the Malaysian does make it through into ninth position here. That is absolutely brilliant driving from Mior Hafiz to manage to find his way through. He's on the softer cop out of tyres, of course, but very impressive stuff there from him. Meanwhile, the question is about Cody Nikola Lukowski. What can he do? He's going to make two more pit stops here in this race. He's going to run the medium and the hard tyres. He's only going to be able to do that until the end of lap 17. But Costa Rica and Bernie Valverde, who are sitting in second position here, let's not forget, are in the pouncings, I reckon. Now here come Australia, and Costa Rica and Bernie Valverde are going to take over at the front in this race. Now, what are they going to do? So Valverde has pulled a blinder here, and he leads the grand final for the 2019 Motorsport Games. But here come Australia, they come out very level pegging, but Australia don't have any opportunity to do it, but they come across the white line of pit lane exit. And we could see the stewards investigating that one, I reckon, because he came out of the pit lane and they were told yesterday in the driving briefing to not cross the white line on pit lane exit. And he did so to try and get himself back into the slipstream of the Costa Rican driver. However, that could prove to be his downfall here, Cody Nikolaikovsky. Let's wait and see what will happen. I suppose the only advantage here for Nikola Lukowski is he's got fresher rubber underneath him, albeit with the medium compound of tyre. The thing is, now is when he would like the soft compound of tyre underneath him. That's the problem, because Costa Rica uh, are on the soft compound. They'll, in theory, be a little bit quicker, but for the fact that their tyres will be a little bit more clapped out. Oh, and Lukowski making mistakes like that, running wide out of T8 into T9. It's not going to help him close down. We ride on board now with the Australian driver. In towards the hairpin of turn 10 of Lakaisha we go. Sitting pretty through there, flicking it left, then flicking it right. And now can Lakovsky do anything? He's going to make one more pit stop, let's not forget. And that could prove to be very costly indeed for Nikola Lakovsky. It's a bold strategy call. Of course, the other advantage for him is that, uh, well, everybody else has made two pit stops. They've got to make another one here uh, in this uh, race. So let's wait and see what will happen. No, in fact, they don't have to... Oh, and Germany, and again, Mikhail is out with another spin. It's gone from bad to worse, but his only has another one trying to get back onto the track and nearly collected there by the United Kingdom. So Mikhail Hazal with absolutely huge drama here. He comes into the pit lane then, onto the hard cop out of tyres for the final time, over the kerb, same as he did before, and Hazal spins it. Well, that is just unlucky there for Mikhail Hazal. Back onto track, we're trying to get going and spins it around again. And James Baldwin there is just so lucky not to collect him. And Germany now emerging behind Sweden. So what can you say about Team Germany leading the race, looking commanding, looking in control, but now looking on the back foot. Speaking on the back foot, here is Australia, Costa Rica in the front of your shot. I'm sure Valverde's got to make another pit stop there. I don't remember him being on the hard compound of tyres. This is the final lap, the penultimate lap, the last chance, the final chance they have got to do so to make these final pit stops in this race if they've done a double stint on the soft compound of tyres. But you can see visibly that Lukowski is quicker. If they both have gone to the hard compound, that'll make it a bit of interesting onto the final lap. But I can't remember, recall Valverde at least being on the hard compound of tyres. But let's wait and see. 
Through into the left hand we go, into the final chicane. Do they both come into the pit lane and peel in for one last time? Across the ring, it spins! The race leader spins! Oh my goodness me, on the penultimate lap! And Valverde may have thrown it all away here. They both come on to the hard combat of tyres. And you can visibly hear from world commentary position the frustration from Bernie Valverde as he spun coming out of there. And Australia do emerge into the race lead on the final lap. Let's see again. Into the chicane we go. Costa Rica over the curb, spins it up, unsettles the car. Makovsky has to take avoiding action. And that could have cost a race here for Valverde and for Costa Rica. My goodness, it is so dramatic, this race. And I tell you what, I was not expecting Cody Lukowski to be doing as well as he is. He's made four stops here in this race. And against all the odds, it's helped having mistakes with other drivers from Costa Rica and from Germany as well. But it has been absolutely blinding that strategy has called. He's kept his nose clean, but for one spin in this race. And now he is looking as comfortable as he ever has done. So Cody Nikola Lukowski then, what can you say about the Australian driver? Just 19 years of age he is, and he has driven with the maturity of somebody twice that age and twice the experience. Just a couple more corners now to go, the final sector for Cody Nikola Lukowski. I tell you what, Bernie Valverde will be ruining that mistake. The Costa Rican driver, he gave it as good as he could. He tried as hard as he could. If he hadn't spun at this point on the last lap, who knows what might have been, but it's going to be second best on this occasion for Costa Rica and Valverde as Cody Nikola Lukowski comes over the line and Australia win the FIA Motorsport Games Grand Final here in Rome in Italy. And Lukowski finally takes the win. He's fought so hard in the World Tour event in Gran Turismo, and now he is on the top step. Valverde and Costa Rica finish in second, and Italy on the top step, or the third step of the podium, I should say, in P3 for Stefano Conti. The UK, well, they were there and thereabouts in P4. Sweden in fifth, Germany in sixth, Poland finish over the line in seventh, then Malaysia, the Netherlands, Hungary, Norway, Chinese Taipei come over the line down in P12. What happened to them at the end of that race? Sadly, it did not go their way at all. But that was hugely impressive from our drivers here. Cody Nicola Lukowski for Australia, who won the Digital Cup. And uh, Cody, that was just such an awesome race. That last chicane was catching everybody out. Yeah, it truly was. Um, that was uh, kind of the key factor for the race. Whoever avoided that the most, it was kind of 95% sure that they were going to win. The strategy with the tyres didn't really come into too much of play when you compare that to the last chicane. So, yeah, I'm just trying my best. I got caught out a couple of times myself, but... Uh, you certainly did, but then you managed to get the better of Costa Rica at the end there. Costa Rica just did exactly what I did. And, <laughs> yeah, it was a real big, big shame. He could have won, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that I got my first win ever. And yeah, proud I could have done my part for Australia. So I feel amazing right now. Couldn't feel better ever. Well, I think you're going to feel even better now because you're just about to go and uh, get on the podium. So I'm going to let you go and walk off to the podium and enjoy it. Yep, thank you very much. OK. So... so in third place for the Digital Cup, it was Italy, Stefano Conti. And in second place, it was Costa Rica. We just heard from Cody there. They had the lead into the last lap, but then they couldn't keep it and spun at that last chicane. So the guys get ready to celebrate on the podium. And Cody can take okay, his victory. The second podium ceremony of this FIA Motorsport Games is time for the virtual motorsport, the digital cup. The third place is for Italy and Stefano Conte, bronze medal for him. The Italian won at the third place in the podium of the first digital cup in the FIA Motorsport Games is in Valladolid. The second place of the silver medal is to Costa Rica and uh, Bernas Valverde. Compliments to Mr. Valverde for this uh, silver medal. And obviously now it's time for the winner, the first winner, the first gold medal from Australia, Cody Litkowski. Compliment to Cody, the winner of the Digital Cup here in Valerunga. 
And now, compromise one with each other. Now it's time for the national anthem for the winner. Francesco Cassioli is the sporting manager and coordinator of ACI Automobile Club Italian. Irene Vallunga giving the bronze medal to the Italian one, Stefano Conte. A great performance for the Italian driver, the virtual driver. And uh, for the second place, the silver medal is Mr. Stefano Rattel, founder and CEO of SRO. Great weekend to Costa Rica and Bernas Valverde. And... Thank you, Mr. Rattel. And now it's time for the gold medal. Tom Aberex, the director of Gran Turismo Explore Group. The gold medal to the winner from Australia to the other side of the world, coming here in Valenunga, Cody Laskowski, and win the gold medal. Compliments to Hall and all three, obviously. Now, guy, just a moment. They have to do the official picture to you. Okay? Let's freeze in the podium. Let's do around the world with the photograph. Thanks to the social and the internet. In a few minutes, all around the world, these three guys, the best of the world in the Digital Cup the second gold medal of this weekend in the FIA Motorsport Games, now taking the bottle of champagne, just a moment, and now, yeah, guy, it's time to party! So it's congratulations to Cody Nicola Lukowski, who takes a gold medal for Australia here at the Motorsport Games. He's enjoying every moment of that up there on the podium. And so he should. It was a tough, tough 19 laps at Barcelona Circuit. And as he said, it was really close between the top four countries. As he managed to get it in the last lap. Congratulations to Australia for the gold.